Hello everybody, welcome back to another Gorious Maths video. In this video, we're going to be looking at, uh, like, not much category theory, just the category theory we need to know in order to understand the Van Kampen theorem, okay? So I'm just going to assume you know what a category and a functor is, and we're going to introduce the fundamental groupoid and um, co-limits and limits of functors okay so right so first we define the fundamental groupoid of a space x and it's denoted capital pi of x okay is the category okay so it's a category whose objects okay are the points in x are points of x sorry got to sneeze no i don't have to sneeze what, what a surprise all right so the objects are points of x and the morphisms um and the morphisms and the morphisms of this fundamental groupoid of x okay from x to y okay are equivalence classes equivalence i don't know how to spell equivalence classes of paths from x to y okay so if we just consider the morphisms, I mean the endomorphisms, so from x to x, we get the fundamental group at some base point x, okay? Now, another useful notation is the skeleton of a category. Now, I'm not going to write cursively like you fancy category theorists. No, no, no. I'm just going to write L, not some fancy L, which I'm can draw in a million years okay so we denote the skeleton of a category l okay so it's sk of l i'll write the l so it doesn't look like a bracket okay is a subcategory of l Okay, such that we assign each object to an isomorphism class class of L. Okay? Right, now the morphisms are exactly the same as the ones of L. All right, so the morphisms are the same as L. And a quick note is that the inclusion functor J, which takes you from the skeleton of L into L is an equivalence of categories and therefore therefore a corollary of this is let's say a map I I don't know what to call it I which takes you from the fundamental group of x at some base point x into the fundamental groupoid of x okay is an equivalent of categories because balance of categories Because I'll let you verify that the fundamental group 
of x at some base point x is equal to the skeleton of the f fundamental groupoid of a space x. Okay? All right, now we look at co-limits of functors and limits of functors, just for general knowledge. Okay, and then we're going to prove the Van Campen theorem. So, to define a co-limit, okay, of a functor, we have to define a D-shaped diagram. So, if we let D be a small category, okay, and let L and L a category, okay, a D-shaped, a D-shaped diagram in L okay a d-shaped diagram in L is a functor okay F which takes you from D into L all right and we have it that any and a morphism which takes you from f to f tilde uh, f prime right is a natural ta is a natural transformation okay and obviously this is a morphism between D-shaped diagrams, okay? Now, the category of D-shaped diagrams in L, okay, is denoted like this, okay? Is the category of D-shaped diagrams in L. Okay, now, um, say for example we have C, if we have C in L, right, so we have C, this is C in L, okay, this determines a constant diagram denoted like this so C with a little line under it I'm not sure how to say it uh, yes yeah, so I'll just say denoted like this I don't know how to say it all right okay such that it has the following properties such that all right um every object in D maps to C, okay, and every morphism in D um, goes to the identity morphism in C, all right? Okay, now that we have all of these definitions, we're ready to define the co-limit of a D-shaped diagram. All right, so the co-limit limit of a D-shaped diagram, um, co-limit denoted like this, okay? Is um is an ob uh, is an object object um of D shaped diagram together with morphisms okay I which take you from F to this constant diagram 
of the co-limit of f, right? Such that for every map epsilon, which takes you from f to a constant map of some a, okay, there exists a unique epsilon tilde, which takes you from the co-limit of f to a. All right, okay, and diagrammatically, this is expressed. Okay, I, I really want to fit this all in one, okay? So, diagrammatically, this is expressed, just pretend I wrote this is a commutative diagram, so that for every p, which takes you from some d into d prime, all right, we have a commutative diagram. I'll just, we have a com di. Basically, this says we have a commutative diagram. All right, now let's take this step by step. Remember that i goes from f to the co-limit of f, okay? So we have f of, let's say, d, right? And this is taking us via i to the co-limit of f. Now, remember that we have p which takes from d to d prime. So we have f of d mapping via f of p to f of d prime, right? And now remember, this is f. This can map via i to the co-limit of f, right? Okay? Now, the co-limit of f goes to a via this unique epsilon tilde, right? Oh, sorry. This epsilon tilde satisfies the condition that epsilon, or that I compose epsilon tilde equals epsilon. Sorry, I forgot about that. All right, and now this takes you to A. Okay, hopefully you can still see that A, right? Now, remember that F goes via epsilon to A. Right, so diagrammatically, the co-limit is defined with this commutative diagram, okay? And the limit of a D-shaped diagram is just defined by reversing the arrows. Sorry, there is a unique epsilon tilde from the co-limit of F to A, such that I compose epsilon tilde equals epsilon, right? Now we're ready to move on to the main part of the video, the Van Kampen theorem. And first we're gonna prove it for the fundamental groupoid. So, um, we're just going to prove the fundamental groupoid version of the Van Kampen theorem. And this theorem looks like really like long, okay? So let's just break it down before we prove it, okay? So we have a cover of a space X. Let's call it O. This is normally denoted by curly O, but I don't trust my writing skills. Okay, so it's a cover of a space X by path-connected open subsets. And this bit right here is just saying that finite intersections of elements of O are still in O, okay? Now, O can be a category whose morphisms are inclusions of subsets, okay? So the morphisms are just inclusion mappings. And the functor pi, which is restricted to O, this cover, gives us a diagram which takes you from pi restricted to O into, well, this is actually denoted with some weird cursive letters. I'm, I didn't even bother to try drawing, but I'm just gonna denote this as the category of all groupoids. Okay, now the fundamental groupoid is the co-limit of this diagram. But in symbols, okay, so I don't have to write this all out for the fundamental group version, Pi of x is isomorphic to the co-limit for all O in U of pi of U. Now the proof follows from the universal property, but we have to verify the universal property. So, given a groupoid, let's 
let's call it L. Alright. Uh, we have a map. Alright, we have a map. We have a map. Alright, let's call it Epsilon. Let's call it Epsilon. <laughs> Alright, so we have a map Epsilon, which takes you from pi restricted to O into the constant diagram of L. Okay? What we have to do is construct Epsilon tilde. And we want it such that it takes you from pi of x into L. Alright, so you can refer back to the diagram and remember that we have to construct this epsilon tilde. Okay? Alright, so now, um, how do we define this epsilon tilde? Well, um, we define epsilon tilde of some of some x equal to epsilon sub u, all right? So it's restricted to u of x, okay? And this is unique. This is independent of choice of u because this is uh, because O is closed under finite intersections, okay? Right, and if um, if a path F which takes you from X to Y lies in one U in one particular U all right, then we define epsilon tilde of the equivalence class of F to be equal to epsilon of the equivalence class of F. All right. Now, this is, uh, again, unique because uh, independent of choice of U, okay. And now what we must do is we have to say that every path we see, oh sorry, let me just continue this proof in green. All right, every path, um, at F is a composite finitely many parts f sub i so what we have to do is let epsilon tilde of the equivalence class of f equal to the composite of epsilon tilde of f sub i and now this is clearly unique okay um by the specification here this require this requirement here shows that epsilon tilde is unique now what we need to show is that it's well defined and i'm going to leave that to you because that's quite easy okay and if you trust me that this epsilon tilde is well defined then QED. We verified the fun, uh, the universal property. If you're not sure what that is, I know for a fact that there's a Wikipedia page on this. Okay. And overall the theorem. Now, you know, it turns out that this Van Kampen theorem holds not only for fundamental groupoids, but for the fundamental group. Okay. And we're going to look and I'm going to leave that as a fun exercise to prove for you to dwell on that a little bit, okay? But it's, it's very difficult, but, you know, 
give it a try. It's very fun. Right. And now we're just going to look at some examples of the Van Kampen theorem. Why is this like helpful in any way? One consequence of the Van Kampen theorem of many, but one which the one which I'll show you, which can be used quite it's just quite a powerful tool is that the fundamental group of x cross y is equal to the fundamental group of x cross, sorry, cross the fundamental group of y. Now, isn't that amazing? Because the torus, or the two torus, or as normal people would say, the donor. Mmm, my god, I'm hungry now. Which can be expressed as the circle cross the circle. Well, that implies that the fundamental group of the torus is equal to the integers cross the integers. So we have computed the fundamental group of the torus. Mm. Oh god, I'm getting hungry. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs>